limits. It's, for one, it's a pretty cool carrier. It's good to be a part of something bigger than yourself. From the moment the USS Nimitz pulls away from Coronado and passes Point Loma on its way out to sea, a flurry of activity is set in motion. 5,000 crew members, each playing their own critical role, whether it be on the flight deck or in the maze of hallways and stairs, working to keep the Navy's mission sailing smoothly. Our ability to bring that all together and integrate uh, it's an integrated fight. Rear Admiral Christopher Sweeney serves as commander for Carrier Strike Group 11, of which the USS Nimitz is the flagship. It's really the bedrock of all the carriers we have right now. The ship is somewhat of a relic in its own right. Commissioned in 1975, it's affectionately called Old Salt and is the lead ship for the Nimitz class of carrier. The sense of ownership, because it is the first in the class and the old salt, is important, and I think that makes us better. For decades, it's shuttled sailors around the world, along with providing a place for planes to touch down and catapult back into the sky. And while the flight deck gets a lot of attention... At that moment, all the line is being held by this line right here called the stopper. It's the people down below that keep the ship running at full speed, whether it's pulling up the ship's 30-ton anchors. It's really fun to uh, do something with that much tradition involved and to know that you're impacting the ship. You know, if we don't do our job, we can't get underway, we can't pull into port. Some of the corn, please. Or keeping the crew fully fed. So they're actively cooking it, pulling it out, cutting it up, putting it on the line. So it's a quick process, quick turnaround. Everybody is enjoying the meal. Even making sure sickness and injuries are addressed. We just keep it as clean as possible, um, try and do the best we can for when we're out deployed. The most common ailment, by the way, getting hurt on those steep staircases, twisted ankles and head injuries to be specific. But when you're on an aircraft carrier, it's hard not to get drawn in by the excitement of planes taking flight in the middle of the ocean. people running around, moving aircraft in and out. It's almost like, it is like a ballet. Now for the USS Nimitz, this isn't actually an official deployment. They're going out to sea to really qualify in a couple of the different skills that they have to practice when it's actually for real. And that'll happen a little bit later this year in December. We're going out on our first workup, which is where we get everybody on board, not just the ship's crew, but uh, we get the strike group, we get the air wing, which is uh, about another 2,000 people. So it's the first time we're really working together. And when it comes to preparing for months at sea, everyone has a different approach. Mentally, I had to, you know, register myself like, okay, you're going to be gone. They're not just a phone call away anymore. Like, you're going to be gone and you're going to miss them. To be able to cope with, you know, whatever you're doing, whether it be listen to music or, you know, read a book or study. Small ways of preparing for a demanding job that at times is more like a calling. I think I was just a born sailor, uh, that this is what I'm supposed to do in life, that this is, this is what I do, it's where I'm supposed to be. Aboard the USS Nimitz, Matt Pritchard, KUSI News. This is part two, Matt. This That's is the right. special port. You were aboard the uh, USS Nimitz. Yes, and I do not have to even imagine it because I got to experience it, and it was a once-in-a-lifetime chance to see what day-to-day -day life is like on board of an aircraft carrier, and safe to say every moment of that experience lived up to the expectations. Tense moments waiting for launch. The crew gives us a signal, and a 22-second clock starts to tick. Ready for the ride of a lifetime, everyone on our C2 Greyhound braces themselves, me included. But before we catapult to the end of this story... Any last words? No. no. I hope we make it back, right? Yeah. Let's start at the top, when I first boarded the USS Nimitz. The Old Salt has been sailing since 1975 making it the oldest, but still one of the most impressive carriers in the fleet. It's just one flight of stairs for now. <laughs> for now. <laughs> one thing you learn quick. Okay. <laughs> Tight squeeze. <laughs> the ship isn't lacking when it comes to stairs and narrow passageways. We're missing one. We're missing one? Yeah. yeah. It happens every time. 
How anyone navigates the halls with confidence is honestly beyond me. Got to step here, Scott. But with a little help, we ducked, weaved, and climbed our way into our quarters. Home sweet home. But we didn't come all this way to sleep, so we turned around and started learning how the Navy prepares for flight. Now here on the USS Nimitz, as well as every aircraft carrier, safety is paramount. And what you're seeing happening behind me here is the foreign object in debris check, making sure there isn't anything on the floor that could be sucked up into a jet engine. Now that's true down here in the hangar bay and up here on the flight deck where every last safety detail needs to be thought of before flight operations can begin. Deal on deck spot four. Once they're geared up and ready to go, a precision dance starts to take shape. An army of shirts moving with purpose and varying in color based on their specific job. Yellow handles aircraft movements, green runs maintenance along with other duties, red on weapons, and purple fuels everyone up, often referred to as grapes by the crew. I am the United States sailor. Now, what stood out to me? I'm 19, about to turn 20. I also kind of lost after high school, so <laughs> I was trying to find something to do. So many of these sailors are just young kids, taking on massive responsibility and serving their country in the process. It's always busy, and I, I like the I like whenever like all the planes are landing, they rush, they fill in. I think it's pretty fun, and not a lot of people get to do it. Rear Admiral Christopher Sweeney says it's one of the Navy's biggest strengths. It's just awesome to kind of level, level, you know, kind of who you are as a person, give you some direction. A lot of, lot of leadership opportunity, right? Um, whether you're a young seaman coming in, you want to work up through the ranks, or whether you're a young ensign coming in, you're going to lead a bunch of young sailors. Nowhere is that better represented than when planes start touching down. It's just crazy. Put planes down in the middle of the ocean. Like a well-oiled machine, the crew seamlessly guides plane after plane in for a landing, while also shuttling them back out over the sea. Which is good news for me, as our plane hooks up to the catapult. Now, the C2 Greyhound that you see on your left, that one's from earlier on in the day. And on the right, we're all just waiting for the click. Who is right? Back safely in San Diego, Matt Pritchard, KUSI News. And my thanks to Scott Nunez for all his hard work. Lugging the tripod and the camera up and down all those stairs. Boy, we had a great time. And uh, boy, what a payoff there right at the end. Oh, my God. It was so great. So it actually kind of catapults you. The engines are going. And it Man. uses that backstop. And it looks like it goes, and then there's just a little bit of dip, and then it goes up. Did you feel that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when it first launches you, you can certainly feel there's something underneath you. It's similar to a takeoff in a commercial airplane, except for very, very much faster. But <laughs> And you feel the ground leave, and uh, you know there's water underneath you. There's no windows in that C2 Greyhound. So you're you're just hoping that these pilots are, are trained as well as they are. They'll get you up in the air and back safely over to uh, Air Station Coronado. You know, from end to end, your special yesterday and seeing today, do you have a new found respect for what these sailors do, especially when they're out on these multi-month missions, you know, six, eight, even yeah. 18 months out at sea on one of these? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just the fact that each one has a specific job that they need to execute on a day-to-day -day basis and every single piece all comes together to keep everything functioning uh, safely uh, throughout the day, whether that's keeping the aircraft carrier moving through the ocean or getting the planes up into the air. Just a massive amount of respect for what these folks do. And like you said, I mean, they're out there for so long. In fact, I talked with a lot of sailors who during the coronavirus pandemic, during the main part of it, you know, they were out there for 11 months or so. That is an extremely long deployment to be away from friends and family. They do it so well and they they're the reason that we all get to enjoy our freedoms on a day-to-day -day basis. Matt, I think you said there were like several thousand so awesome. on board there. 5,000 5, people. 5, when they yeah. have the air wing, when they have everyone on board, it's yeah. 5,000 people. What, what do the bunk beds look like? Are they just kind of <laughs> stacked <laughs> up there? Well, it kind of depends. We were talking about how, like, with the enlisted uh, uh, sailors, men and women, uh, they're in a giant uh, bunk room where there might be 80 or so people that are in one area. And then, of course, you have officers who maybe you only have one roommate or two roommates, and you move up the chain, and then you have less and less roommates that you have to deal with. But even the one that Scott and I were in, it is, it's tight quarters. I had to get up onto the top bunk and basically sort of, like, peel myself underneath <laughs> and not hit the pipes that were right above me.
So. You know, I spent a night on a ship and I learned the uh, the person with the biggest quarters, mm -hmm. other than the captain, was the cook. Uh, yeah, <laughs> keep them happy. Exactly. It's, it's and the smart. food looks so good too. Yeah. They yeah. fed us well the entire time. It was absolutely fantastic, top to bottom. I think I was telling you, Logan, I got to see basically every level based, you know, from the enlisted side of things, the galley, all the way up to the admiral. Everyone seemed to be enjoying the meal. They get good food. We feed them well, rightfully so, because of mm -hmm. what they're doing for the country. Yeah. Absolutely. Just tremendous job to you and Scott, Matt. Thank you.